This isn't small. This isn't like, hey, I saw something in the sky. It's so much bigger than that. UFOs are real. Congress is holding its first hearing on UFOs in more than 50 years. And the government's finally taking them seriously. This is a national security issue. Putting your head in the sand and saying it doesn't exist is not an appropriate solution or approach. If there's something that's up there, out there, and we don't know what it is, it could harm us. So figure out what it is. So wait, are we talking spaceships with little green men who are weirdly obsessed with cows? The fact that we don't know what it is doesn't mean that we then know what it is. That's what the U stands for in unidentified aerial phenomena. If it's unidentified, you don't know what it is. How could anyone possibly know that information? It's ridiculous. In 2021, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand led efforts alongside Senator Marco Rubio and Representative Ruben Gallego to include an amendment in the latest defense bill that required the DOD to set up a permanent office meant to investigate what they're calling UAPs. Under all circumstances, you need to know what it is. Because if it is an adversary, let's say it's Russia or China, you better know what technology they have. And if it's other, then you also need to know that. Like, you really have to know the answer and use as much scientific capability as we have to make those determinations. And if we don't have enough scientific capability, then increase the scientific capability. So far, the DOD has collected about 400 credible reports. They haven't provided any answers other than a list of possible explanations like airborne clutter, natural atmospheric stuff, classified U.S. tech, classified foreign tech, or alien, I mean, other. We've been seeing UFOs for a long time, and it's not the government's first time looking into it. And in the 50s, particularly the early 50s, it was kind of a UFO craze. And you had these sort of mass sightings of UFOs, of flying saucers. It was all over the media. And a lot of that turned out to be, you know, either pranksters or things that were easily explained. But there was enough sort of noise there that the Pentagon decided to begin to collect data. The program was called Project Blue Book, and it called on the Air Force to investigate UFOs from 1947 to 1969. By the end of the program, the Air Force had looked into over 12,000 sightings, of which over 700 still remain unidentified. It was enough to keep people interested over the years. And I think that's the thread that was picked up in the, in the 2000s when Senator Harry Reid from Nevada decided that, look, we need to spend some official time and, and money and, and really do this right. And that's how ATIP came to be. ATIP, or the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, was an unclassified but unpublicized program. In fact, the public didn't even know it existed until 2017, five years after the program had officially ended. Lou Elizondo was in charge of ATIP, and the more he investigated UAPs, the more he was convinced they might not be of this world. And when he would try to present facts to people within the Pentagon, his higher-ups, there was a lot of skepticism, and so he was pushed off, he felt. And so eventually he decided to bring this program to public light. We're learning this morning about a Pentagon program that spent millions of dollars to look into UFO sightings. Fuzzy videos captured by military pilots caused a media splash. There is very compelling evidence that we may not be alone. Elizondo resigned and joined forces with Tom DeLong, who you may know as this guy. All the small things. Yeah. The guy from Blink-182. The entry point for like UFOs for people is because they saw something in the sky, you know? Then the second thing is, oh my gosh, you know, aliens, you know, they're coming from other planets. And then people kind of like stop there. The evidence of these things uh, is really pointing that these things aren't coming from planets. The past, present, and future exist at one moment. So that means you can laterally step back and forth depending on frequency. We can't do this, but something else can. Doc. I'm from the future. In 2015, DeLong left the band and started a company called To The Stars. The mission of To The Stars is to study, analyze, and um, explain all these different facets of this phenomenon. One of their biggest projects was a documentary series called Unidentified. In it, they released the first three UFO videos taken by Navy pilots. Three years later, the Pentagon confirmed these videos were real. The progress that's been made might not have been made if those videos had not leaked and captured so much attention and sparked so many questions. And I think if the public could see more of what some of the pilots are seeing and radar operators are seeing and other military personnel are seeing, 
their level of interest would be much higher, their demands would be greater, and the system responds to that. There's some next level shit going on around here and I'm with that. It may be a while before the Pentagon declassifies more information, but scientists everywhere have been trying to collect their own data too. For example, SETI, which stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, has been around for over 60 years. It even influenced the movie Contact. Contact was exceptional in that the science in it was accurate, I mean, until the alien showed up, right? Uh, right. We have uh, a listening station about 300 miles north of San Francisco in the Cascade Mountains here in California. We point them in the direction of nearby stars, think, okay, maybe they have a planet like ours, and maybe there's somebody there who is broadcasting radio waves. Why? Well, we don't know why, but in a sense, we don't care why. If we discover intelligent life in the universe, that would be extraordinary. One of the most extraordinary discoveries ever. It's hard to assess what the likelihood of success would be in that, but we all, we all think it's pretty low. They might be right about that, but on the other hand, you can always say, look, if we don't look, do you expect us to find anything? <laughs> of course not. And it's like a fishing expedition. If you don't cast a fishing net, you will never find anything. Avi Loeb is not a fisherman, but a professor at Harvard who was inspired to look for ETs after an interstellar object visited our solar system in 2017. It was given the name Oumuamua, and at first astronomers thought it must be a comet. But there was something weird going on. It didn't look or act like a comet, and scientists were confused. This anomaly was very intriguing because it looks like an artificial object. The scientific community was very reluctant to even discuss this possibility. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Well, guess what? Extraordinary evidence requires extraordinary funding. Two million dollars later, Loeb started the Galileo project, which has two big things in the works. One is to build a special telescope that can better identify UAPs, and another is to send a rocket with a camera up to the next interstellar object and take a picture of it. You guys discovered a comet? That's so dope. There was once a time when we thought the Earth was flat. Eventually, we figured it out, well, most of us at least. There are still many things we don't understand about how the universe works. So what's true? Are aliens real, and are they here? Well, personally, I'm not convinced that the aliens are really here. Uh, the search for intelligence, by the way, has certain assumptions that we even know what intelligence is, or that we, in fact, are intelligent. We should be guided by evidence and not by our emotions or prejudice. Overwhelmingly, they're going to be either drones or have some other conventional explanation. But the question there is, are any of them manifestations of alien intelligence. And if even one or two are, that is arguably the greatest discovery in the history of science and mankind. Until then, maybe the answer remains unidentified.